Hi. Welcome to the Open Mind Show. I'm Anita Burns. My guest today is Esther Jenkins, and Esther is a shaman. Uh, she teaches shamanism. She's studied it for many years, and uh, this is a topic that I am fascinated by but know very little about. So I'm really, really looking forward to talking with Esther and finding out more about this interesting and wonderful subject. Hi, Esther. Hi, Anita. How are you? Well, I'm fine. I've got this little bottle here. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> I can't see. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So, tell me what, I know that there's a, there's a popular idea in the, quote, New Age community uh -huh. about what shamanism is, and that I'm sure is, uh, is uh, distorted or isn't the whole picture. So tell me a little bit about, first of all, what it is. Well, can I ask you a question too? Sure. Is that okay? Sure. Uh, what is this? What is it from your perception? What is it? Have you heard? Well, the only my only experience with the shamanism is uh -huh. a, is um, I think he was a Lakota Sioux uh, who came and talked to to a group some 15 years ago about how it had to do with connecting with the nature spirits and. Uh -huh. um, uh, just sort of using the the energies of the earth uh, to uh, perform in what translated in my mind was magic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. healing and so okay. forth. Yeah. Well, my background is in magic. I've, uh -huh. I've studied Western uh, Western teachings. Uh -huh. I started out in the late fifties, early sixties. So it's been a long journey, and in that journey, I studied everything: I Ching. Oh, yeah. Kabbalah, or Kabbalah, the, uh, of course, Tarot. I did work with energy, but it wasn't hands-on energy. It was more or less distance type mm -hmm. of healing, mm -hmm. which was very popular at that time. Um, as a result of that, when I got older, I more or less incorporated everything I knew into what I was doing. And, of course, I ended up being a high school physical education teacher, which didn't really <laughs> work real well, but, uh, you know, it was very hard to integrate and talk about, which today is not anywhere near that difficult. But uh, as time went on, I realized that if I didn't get to be about the work, mm -hmm. I was going to end up very ill. Mm -hmm. And that's the shaman's journey, and you've probably heard this one before. Yeah. The shaman is called sometimes very early on, but not necessarily very willing to go that trip because they know it's a, it's a hard road. Uh, not, it doesn't have to be life-threatening, but it, it is always challenging. Mm -hmm. So when I came across shamanism many years later, as I, w I got ill, of course, and ended up in the hospital, uh, and ended up at the Healing Light Center Church in Glendale mm -hmm. with Rosalind Briere, and some of you, some people already know Rosalind, and I had a profound experience there because she was very eclectic, just as my first teacher was, and ended up teaching us everything, including shamanism. Oh. So it was African shamanism, it was Native American shamanism, and at the same time, I'm in the 80s, I'm in connection with Alberto Vialdo. Mm -hmm. And Alberto is just starting his work, and he's not in yet to have a school, so I'm bouncing around between all these processes. As time goes on and I graduate and I start a healing practice, I realize that what really has my heart is the shamanic work. Mm -hmm. And just about this time, I'm invited to go to Peru. And I, on my first journey to Peru with Alberto Vialdo, and of course, I have a profound experience there and reconnect with who knows how many lifetimes because I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But I know that this work, I must do this work. Mm -hmm. So I come back with this fire, you know, in my, in my belly that I have to do this work. And I, I ask myself the same question you do because shamanism is so many things. It's the, really, it's the heart and soul of all of the spiritual traditions that we have. And if you go back far enough, you'll find some shamanic vein in every one of them in which they honor spirit in everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's lovely. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. It's spirit is in everything. So everything is considered sacred. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is, it, it's, it's handled differently, you know, in India than it may be in Africa. Then they may, uh, you know, not want to kill certain animals because everything is a part of that. But in a country where in order to survive, you have to live on the land, mm -hmm. that's not, it's not necessarily a, a given. 
So it's very adaptable to whatever the situation is. But the most important part of it for me, for young people and for people in the work is, it's very grounding. Mm -hmm. So in order to be a shaman, you have to be very connected to this world, even though you journey in the other world. And that's part of it. Mm -hmm. You are not only a healer, you work with the community, whereas in sorcery it's more about personal power. In shamanism it's more about power to support the community. Well, you just answered my next question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, what is the difference between, let's mm -hmm. say, what we know of as magic, and I don't mean, like, pull the rabbit out of the hat magic, okay. like Wiccan magic and so forth, and shamanism, and you just answered that. And I never really thought about uh, in that way, but yes, I, I can certainly see that now. Yeah, people like to put an onus on sorcery because they say it's bad, it's black. Sorcery is sorcery. It's mm -hmm. just manipulation of energy. And mm -hmm. everybody has an opportunity to be a sorcerer at times. But and how it's many the people, focus. how many people in the ordinary world hasn't sat there and go, oh, please let this be, please mm -hmm. let this be? Mm -hmm. Is that not trying to manipulate energy? Yeah, more or less. <laughs> Praying it's is also, you know. <laughs> it's tricky. Well, uh, it, yes. And. Um, it, it's a matter of intent. Mm -hmm. Intent is the whole thing. Yeah. So reconnecting ourselves to that which we are physically uh, been born into, what we actually cannot separate from as long as we're on the planet, we're on a physical planet, we have a physical body, mm -hmm. and, we, and we need the, the, the world, in, in other words, the planet in order to support ourselves. So if one is in touch with the plants and understands the plant world, one knows how to eat what's important and what's right for the body. Mm -hmm. Okay, or if one needs to have something in order to survive, one then can track that. That's a tracking is a part of shamanism. Track it? What do you mean by track To it? read the energy, to see how it's flowing, mm -hmm. and to follow the energy to where it takes you, mm -hmm. because you've set an intent. Mm -hmm. So you're leaving this up to spirit, so to speak, to guide you along the lines that best supports who you are and what you're doing. Uh -huh. So it, it's not about a godless kind of concept at all. They definitely believe that there is spirit in everything. They don't always, uh, they sometimes venerate it as a specific spirit, but always they know there's something beyond that. In other words, the local deity is not the all. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you, you, I take it that your shamanistic, your shamanistic practice is a little more eclectic than mm -hmm. maybe someone who is um, um, more dedicated in a particular path. Um, well, a particular yes, tradition yeah, or culture. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do. I do teach Peruvian shamanism. Peruvian. Okay. I do. Um, I start off. The first class that I teach is called uh, Exploring Shamanism, uh -huh. and that's eclectic. That mm -hmm. that particular class is geared to support people, uh, to allow people to know what's available, what's uh -huh. what's going on in various shamanic traditions. When I teach the second level. That's, that is the second workshop in the mm -hmm. series. There's a three, it's a three-part series. I'm teaching them specifically about Inca shamanism or uh -huh. Andean shamanism. And that is more about the archetypes, the animal spirits, uh, how they work with the elementals, the wind, the fire, and, and so on. I'm just curious, Inca and Andean, where does that information come from? Okay, good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, when the Spaniards came in mm -hmm. to Peru, uh, some of the individuals fled. Those, uh, the, the Caro, as they're called, those are the indigenous people. There are many, many uh, tribes in Peru, for one thing. There's many, many different tribes. Uh -huh. But the Caro, the Caro are around the Cusco area. And how's that spelled? K, well, it depends because it's not a written language. So uh -huh. Q E Q hyphen E R O is All one right. way of so spelling it. So if somebody it. wanted to look on the internet for more information oh, about yes. that, they could spell uh, that. There's a website, uh, it's going to not be at the top, www. Mm, Andean, no, I can't think of it it's right okay. now. We'll put it up though yeah. because it's a, it's a marvelous dictionary that right. gives a complete right. discussion of all of these principles. So some of the people didn't flee and that They fl fled, but they fled to such high elevations, ah. the Spaniards couldn't follow them. Oh, I see. They couldn't survive in that higher elevation. So it's been passed down? It's been passed down. They came down back, uh, oh, some 15, 20 years ago from the mountains. It was a, it was, it, it was just up until that time a myth that mm -hmm. they even existed. 